This video is sponsored by our friends at FlexiSpot. I'm always amazed that the iPad has so many features that just remain buried. I use the word hidden in the video title because that's what these tips feel like to me. These practical tips are actually hiding in plain sight. If you've got a few minutes, then stick around. This video is worth your time. Hi, my name is Rich. I've made a lot of iPad and iPhone tutorials over the last few years, and honestly, I forget half the stuff I teach. It just feels like there's too much to remember. Anyway, I made an iPad tips video and an iPhone tips video recently. I'll include links in the description below in case you'd like to check them out. That did surprisingly well. So many viewers commented that they'd learned a thing or two. And for some reason, those tips have stuck with me. So I'm heading back to the well again with six more tips. Okay, let's jump in. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is just split screen and how to use it. It can be a little bit rough um, to figure out how to do it, but there is a really simple way. So I'm just gonna open up, say, Safari. And normally, if you wanted to do split screen, you slide up and you grab an app and you take it over and slide it to the side and now you've got two uh, apps open side by side and that works and then if you want to get rid of one of the apps you kind of sh get it in the middle and then just move it over like that but there's an easier way if you tap the three buttons at the top you can tap on split view right there and now you just choose an app so I'll choose reminders and now you didn't have to do any of that swiping and if you want to close an app, you can tap on the three buttons and tap on close. And you can tap on those three dots again and tap close. And you've closed both apps. And that's just way easier than doing it by sliding stuff all around. The next little tip I want to show you is just how to lock a note. I get this question from time to time when I do a video on notes. And Apple put this feature in not too long ago. And you can actually put, you know, important, sensitive stuff, or whatever you want in a note, and then you can lock it. So I'm going to open up notes, and I've got this new note right here, and I'm just going to type passwords. I don't know that I'll ever put passwords in a note, but hey, you can. So now you've got your note open, and if you go to the three dots right here, you can tap on lock right there, the little lock, and now I'm going to set it up. I'm going to enter a passcode. And that'll be my locked passcode. And now I'm just going to close the app. And if I go back to that, here it is. The note is locked. And if I want to view the note, I can either use the Touch ID on the side or I can enter the passcode. I'll enter the passcode again. And now I'm back inside the lock note. It's pretty handy. Hey, now is a good time to jump in and tell you about today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. I was excited when they reached out to me about their E6 dual motor standing desk with that gorgeous bamboo top. It arrived in two boxes and assembly was a breeze. As I put it together, I could immediately tell the components were durable and the whole thing was made of premium parts. It took me about, I don't know, 35, 40 minutes to put it together. And as someone who's picky about their desk, when I stood this up, I knew it was a keeper. The bamboo top has an elegant edge and the natural grain finish will look great in any room. The control panel can be mounted on the left or right side of the desk and has four memory positions. Of course, with the up and down arrows, you can adjust the desk to any height you'd like. The dual motors are incredibly strong and are rated to lift up to 355 pounds over 20,000 times. I don't weigh 355 pounds, but it did lift me with ease. And these motors are not just strong, they're quiet and smooth. Check out how I placed a glass of water full to the top and a quarter on its edge on the desktop and then engaged the motors to lift the desk. No water spill, quarter still on its edge. This thing really is quiet and smooth as glass, and it's sturdy and stable too, solid as a rock. And while I love to sit at this desk and do my work, long hours in my chair do me no good, and the ability to tap one button and stand and continue doing work does me a world of good. 
The FlexiSpot E6 comes with a 15-year warranty on the frame and motors and two years on the control panel and electronics, so you're covered. If you're looking for a standing desk, you can't go wrong with the FlexiSpot E6 desk. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for more information. Okay, now back to the video. Okay, the next tip I want to talk to you about is Spotlight. I usually use Spotlight to open apps. I keep my home screen clean and I just pull down and I type, you know, reminders and then I open reminders like that. But there's so much more that you can do with Spotlight. For example, you can do math. So if I type 20 minus 5, it will do math calculations. So you kind of have a calculator on your iPad. You can do other things too. It will convert stuff. So if you put 22 centimeters, it will tell you that it's 8.66 inches. Every now and then I buy something and it, the measurements are in centimeters and I want to know how many inches it is and so I just pull up Spotlight and do that. And you can also search for contacts in Spotlight. If I type in Lindsay, there her contact information pops up. And by the way, you don't even have to type stuff in. You can just tap on the little microphone and speak it. 20 minus 5 and you get your answer. 22 centimeters. And there you get your answer. Lindsay. And there you get the contact. It's pretty cool. Just multiple ways to use Spotlight that I don't typically dig into, but I'm going to going forward. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is just moving the cursor. Uh, I made a video uh, about how you could just tap and hold the space bar and move the cursor around, but there's another handy way to do that too. I'm going to show you, I'm going to open a note, and here I've got a note with some text in it. And if you're anything like me, you maybe misspell a word and you, then you try to tap the cursor around and you can't get it to where it needs to be and then you just end up deleting two or three words and then retyping them. But you can tap and hold the space bar and you can move that cursor all around just like that and I did that in one of my tips videos before but you can also just take two fingers and just move it anywhere just like that if you don't want to remember to tap the space bar just use two fingers and then you can move it anywhere you want and you can correct any mistakes pretty handy and pretty simple so two ways space bar and two fingers. I don't know if you know this, but you can open two instances of the same app. So if I open Reminders, and then I go up here and tap the three dots, and I tap Split View, I can go over and open Reminders again. Well, you might wonder, why would I want to do that? Well, I have some lists, and one of my lists is called life areas and one is called weekdays and every Friday I sit down and I make a list of all the things I need to do in these areas and then I want to put them on a list for weekdays and I tap that list and now I can just drag it over like that and I can move it over to the days of the week and then after I've done that dragging and have everything set up. Now I can just tap on the weekdays and I see what I have to do Monday through Sunday. And you can do that by opening two instances of the same app. And by the way, if you want to open two apps that are different, we'll open, let's say, the calendar. Now we have the calendar. You can drag things like this over to your calendar too and just create a new event just like that. And now I've reminded myself to pick up meds at 5 p.m. That's how you can open two instances of the same app or a different app. Pretty handy. Okay, this last tip is a little bit odd. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this a lot, but I did want to show it to you. Um, you have a, a button here, the power button that's on the top of the iPad, or in this case in landscape mode, it's on the side right here. And if you go into your settings, and you go into accessibility 
you can set up what a triple tap on that button will do. So if you slide all the way down to accessibility shortcuts and tap on that, there's a number of things that you can choose from. So today I'm just going to choose the magnifier. And if you notice, this says triple click the top button and that will open up the magnifying glass. So if I close this out and then I just triple tack like that, I get the magnifying glass. Now you can see my keyboard that I use. You can zoom in really big like that and then you can close it, triple tap, and you've got the magnifying glass open. And it's just a quick way to get to it without having to dig around to find the magnifying glass. And of course you can look in accessibility there and maybe choose something else that suits you better. But a handy little tip. Well, I hope this short video was worth your time. And if it was, I hope you remember the tips that'll help you out the most. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks again to our friends at FlexiSpot. Be sure to check out their link in the description below. Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next video.